Hello everybody, welcome. Tonight we are doing the Temperance card. So Temperance is the number 14 in the Tarot Jack Prince. So we've got 1 plus 4 will equal 5. We have 5, the number that shows mental action and truth. We have got number 14. So this is a card that indicates a lot of patience and it's about calmness and it's mixed with caution. Outer calmness mixed with caution and patience. This is what creates temperance. And 14 brings calmness and tranquility. And within these two forces, we find concentration and realization. So temperance is linked astrologically to Sagittarius and the planet Jupiter. If this comes up in a reading and you're asking about Sagittarius, this is the card to look at. This card shows an angel pouring water from one golden chalice into another. The central re representation of this card is balance and moderation and also restraining one's soul. If we look at our figure, got an angel here and I'll be talking you through all of this. Um, let's start with the fact that the angel has a white dress. Now that is symbolic of purity and passive energy. And there's a white square over the heart. Can you see that in the chest area? And um, that white square has an orange triangle over the heart area and that is symbolic of an element of earth which provides structure and the physical side of purity which is the white the one in the chest area it's pointing upright and so that masculine symbol and it's a symbol of fire and that orange is there it's like orangey red which is all about passion, enthusiasm, and physical energy. When structure meets creativity, the emotional self starts to grow. And that's where our passions and interactions lie with life. And so this symbolizes that emotions are raised and that counteracts any desires. So we become more peaceful, more calm, and we get more perspective. So this calmness stops us um, wanting to be driven or to crave things. It brings a balance, a peace, a harmony. If we look at our figure, and that's an angel, the angel's wings are fiery red, or in some decks it's different colours. Um, there's tinges of dark orange in there. Those colours represent passion, action, and wisdom, and the fight for freedom. This is a card of wanting to do your own thing, to reach your higher state, to have growth, to have an understanding to combine opposites, because Tim Ponis will talk about that in a minute, is the combination of combining opposites to be able to create something entirely different. And it's about calming them, alchemy, and creating something that's new and something that requires balance. So there's a halo around white space, around our angel's head, around the hairline there, yeah, that is representing radiance and signifies spiritual enlightenment and a higher understanding. So the disc that you can actually see another symbol for you is on the angel's forehead, and this is gold, and that's a colour of power and magic, illumination, and it's masculine. And it's forming a circle with a tiny centre dot, and that's representing the sun, the solar system, and that spark of life. 
like a little cell. So it covers her mind in this area here, um, which is um, the brow chakra, which is our intuition. Gold is also symbolizing an understanding of the message that we are getting. And our angel is showing us that they've developed individual following and found out their own individual path. Spiritual enlightenment is usually associated with the feminine. When this masculine aspect is brought to life, you've got this yin and yang forming two opposites, which allows for possibilities to be born, making dreams become a reality. And the square and the triangle, just like the circle and the dot, are all alchemy symbols, like I told you. They show that what we create purifies and brings things into stability. So we can create balance by taking just the right amount from each one. And our figure is showing that as in with the cups. So the angel's got one foot in the water and one foot on land. And the foot in the water links to the subconscious world of our watery emotions. And the earthy part where they're standing on that rock on the ground is represented by the stone, and that is to do with our groundedness, our earthiness. The water is symbolic of emotions in this card, as it usually is in many cases, and it shows calm and clear ripples. It's not choppy or charging or doing anything that upsets the balance. And the stone is just giving us that groundedness. So we've got, you know, we've got water here as in telling us it's the emotional, we've got the groundedness coming here from the earthiness, we've got the alchemy symbols coming in. And if we look at that pool, it tells us that the emotions are not as deep as they would be if it was like a flowing river or an ocean. But because it's almost like a stream, where it's not even a babbling brook, is it? It's just very calm, very gentle. When the water and the stone connect, there is that equal grounding for our figure with practicalities and the emotional. And that's what this card means. The angels coming down into the physical sort of realm, as it were, to bring the balance of our spiritual and our intuitive with the practical. So when these two cups show a merging and a mixing of water, it can help us know that we have got to look at that balance between emotion, our actions and our purpose. And it's about combining and reconciling opposites so that whatever's been happening, you are making it work for you to create something new. So the water is all about bringing peacefulness. And remember, we have the death card number 13 that we did on last Thursday. Some of you remember that. And there's been so much disruption with that card because it's all about transformation. So this is why we've got temperance afterwards. After all things have been transformed, there is going to be something where we need to find a peacefulness and a harmony, but we mustn't be too much up with our spirituality, and we mustn't be too grounded either. So that balance has been shown here between the two streams that are flowing between the cups. Opposites are combined to actually cause one flow, and that's what this card is about. If you look, they're separated by three lines streams showing something is being born from those opposites. So it's a combination of two things that create a third thing. I'm sure you can think of something else that would actually make you think that's what this card's about. The two cups show cooperation and compromise. 
indicating that the differences that have been the challenges that you've had or the issues will merge and create peacefulness on the inside and the outside. So it's both levels. The angels got their eyes closed and they're pouring water. If you look at that's a really strange angle. Most people would be holding it like that, wouldn't they? This is a strange angle, almost impossible to actually get that to flow and for that to mix. But that is control in allowing the faith within our angel and the magic that our angel has to be able to mix it all together. And the cups are golden. Now that gold signifies the relevance of the practical side of our life. The angel has gained wisdom and so they are moving forwards from any experiences and if there is heated emotions as we go through the turmoil of change, then we've got to be careful that we have to have that balance, that calm, that peacefulness over our emotions. It's a form of acceptance, if you like. If your life has completely been transformed, you have to be accepting. You have to find that balance within yourself, in the inside and the outside. If we look at our card, we've got the orises sitting there, growing greenery by our angel's gown towards their feet. And the irises symbolize courage, hope, wisdom, and a yellow. That's a sign of passion. They are in full bloom, which means happiness, abundance, maturity. But just like the cups, and we've got two cups there, we've got one still in bud, if you look, and one that's showing a full bloom. So the one that's actually budding, as it were, is showing future potential. That's what that is symbolic of. Behind that angel, we have a road look, and it travels through those two hills, green hills, and there's mountains in the background. And in some cards, we've got a golden crown down by our angel's feet. In different decks, you'll see different things. And in our deck, we've got the sun. Okay, because this is a traditional right away deck based on older deck. The radiant right away deck that I used to teach my courses with has that little crown. I've got some cards for us to look at to compare different things that are going on um, by using different decks, what you'll see in them, how it might work for you, or how it might not be the right deck for you. Just some examples. Because sometimes people get stuck, and when they get stuck, half of the problem is that they are using a deck that's not right for them, or they are in a position of not putting out enough cards. They are doing what I would say is they're using too little an amount of cards. Their spread is perhaps, oh, three cards, five cards. So I don't do any more than why? Because you really need to be able to look at what the cards are telling you, the messages there, there's a story, there's a whole life in there, as in for the person that's having that reading. Okay, so we talked about the fact that there is sunshine there in this original sort of deck. We can see the sun, the newer decks, we see like the crown. And we have got that wonderful, again, mountain symbolizing that life's realities are hardships. There are the ups and the downs. But look at the position of our figure. 
they've got their back to the mountain, looking at it, and not even looking sideways. So always take note of the figure. So what that means is they have had life's realities already. And yeah, there's probably more mountains to come, more challenges, but their back is turned to it, and therefore past troubles are not being dwelt upon. And so they are instead focused on the gifts, being able to create a wise, tempered approach to life. So temperance can be compared to something called the middle way, which is a philosophy that comes from the East, I think. And their philosophy is to actually find the middle ground, not to be too good, not too bad either. Because perfectionism is probably unrealistic. And so we're aiming for something that is the middle ground. And somewhere in between will be the good and the bad and the perfect and the imperfect. So that middle sort of way is often talked about with the temperance card because it's the mindfulness that we are striving to get our personal best without going to extremes. Remember this card is about no extremes. In cases where um, we can't find a way of moving forwards, there are things that we have to look at in every action to make sure that it's balanced and nothing is forced and everything is accepted and reconciled. So this is about compromise and cooperation with yourself and with others and allowing you to be in as calm as you possibly can be in the face of any problems. Once we've got peaceful contemplation, then we can start to reach to that place where we have growth. And so moderations in all things, it's the yin and the yang balancing the opposites to iron out all the creases. So temperance is a card of cooperation. It brings renewed and refreshed, balanced views and emotions. And it's possible to achieve the right balance in any situation. It's possible to achieve the right balance in any situation. And if life's been difficult, then this card represents a return to balance. And then we learn what temperance is. And temperance is about using our common sense, remaining calm, and reflecting before we make decisions. Uh, especially when we're dealing with difficult situations. So it's a healing energy. And that is brought about by an understanding and a peacefulness. So this card tells us to stay in control, to be creative, but not to force it, not to go to any extremes, everything in moderation. We know that saying. But not, not to force it, to be more relaxed, to be more of the sort of the eastern sort of way. What we will be and I'll go with the flow and I am accepting. Because when we're accepting, we're in control. And then we are not handing our control over to the outcome that's outside of us. I am very accepting that relationship finished. And although it's painful, I'm in a place where I'm accepting. Therefore, it's like you've suddenly got that peacefulness because you are not putting your, because you're in acceptance, you're not putting the blame or the outcome of your happiness based on something that is outside of your control. So the energy that you need is sometimes about keeping a lid on everything and keeping things really calm and looking for making things fuse together for things to actually just balance. And this could be a card that comes up for you if you have had quite a lot of problems in life, but you've navigated them 
with a calmness and a serenity in your outlook in life. And so it may be that your life was filled with chaos and challenges and lots of setbacks. Welcome to the club. <laughs> and this can actually be that someone's coming into your life that's offering you advice and that the advice is good, balanced and worth taking. Everything will fall into place when you're able to be in this place. This is almost, it's, it's almost like watching somebody walk around and they are very graceful and nothing phases them. Of course it does. They're probably like that duck that's swimming on the water and gliding. But underneath, they're probably pedaling like crazy just to make it look like that. And it's not forcing it. It's what you have to do. It's a practicality. It's to glide across the water. You've got to be pedaling, pedaling, pedaling away. There are lots and lots of reasons that it's hard to acquire this, and it is an acquired skill. It's not something that you probably find that somebody has an aspect of them where they were blessed and born with that immediately. So where this comes up in, shall we say, a reading, and it's about a relationship perhaps, temperance is um, a card that's telling as that relationship could have really suffered some difficulties. But there's been reconciliation, there's been forgiveness, and within the situations of this relationship, that things are possible. So can you see what I'm saying? And despite what's happened, it's almost like moving forwards in acceptance and saying, we'll just have to learn from this. We'll have to grow. We'll have to navigate this. And so it's actually a really lovely combination. There's reconciliation and forgiveness within all situations and relationships. I'm going to put some key words up there for you. So have a quick look at this. Temperance, healing, key words for you. Moderation, linked to Sagittarius. Mixed cultures, we'll talk about that in a minute, and long distance travel. Mixed cultures. Okay, if you look at this card and you look at the angel's um, wings there, you could look at that as air travel. And Sagittarius is definitely linked to long distance travel. So keep that in mind. This comes up and somebody says, oh, is it somebody local? Probably not. You are being given a clue then that there is something maybe to do with, they come from another country, they speak another language, like, it's going to be a long distance relationship perhaps. These are some of the examples of what long distance might mean. Mixed cultures, that might be from different countries, it might be from different religions, it might be even the fact that you've got a division in countries themselves. Sometimes you've got examples of the North South divide, these kind of things. I want to talk a, a little bit more about the Temperance card because our figure is showing this winged angel who's both masculine and feminine. There you go. Yeah. And there's an argument sometimes about who this is. I'll reveal who I believe it is with all the studies that I've taken over the years. It always comes back to one thing. And our figure as in, is wearing a very light robe. And that triangle and the square on the front, I said, represents the earth and the natural flow. It's all symbolic. And that angel is balancing one foot on the rocks and expressing the need to stay grounded by doing that. So we all need to be grounded. There's one foot on the water going with the flow of life, pouring the water, symbolic of the flow, of the alchemy of life. And in the background, we've got that winding mountain again, just to 
tell us that we have got challenges that we have perhaps left behind and will come to again. And that golden sort of crown of beautiful glowing light that's there is just symbolic of taking a higher path towards one's true purpose and meaning. If temperance was a person, okay, let's do that. They would be balanced. They would be moderate. They would be somebody that's probably either healing or they are a healer. They would be linked to long distance travel and higher learning because, of course, we are looking at Sagittarius and the middle path. In order to take the middle path, something's required for it to be mixed with something else. And that's the Latin sort of word is, I think it's temperate, which means to mingle. The big reveal, the winged angel is Archangel Michael. And we can see this because, and this is the school of thought, there is the solar disk at place of the third eye in the forehead, which is why I go with that because who that is what book after book, course after course has um, been the theme. And I like the fact that it's not just, oh, I think it's Archangel Raphael. There's a lot of people think that. If you do, it, I'm sure it doesn't really affect your readings, okay? It's just that Archangel Michael is often known as our friend. Archangel Raphael is the one that protects us. Okay. There is a lot going on in this card. And some of the key sort of words is it is very much about long distance travel, international, higher learning, because it's Sagittarius. And of course, it can represent a person who is also a Sagittarius. It's also air travel, as I mentioned, and why? And a holiday card. Ah, holiday card. Now, if this comes up in a reading, you might say, gosh, are you off traveling? This looks like long distance travel. And it's about experiencing harmony. What a lovely card. Joining in with others, mixing and blending and socializing. So it's a great card of being able to have friendships. But it's about mixing and blending with people, not necessarily with the outcome um, attached to it, such as that. So when you mix two things, you'll end up with a third, won't you? And that's really what this card is all about. So here are some temperance cards that I've got on the screen for you. Very different. And the whole reason that I want to do this is to actually show you that different decks can either make you or break you. There's so many beautiful decks, which is obviously the reason I've got them too, but can we read with them? And it, does it speak to you? And if it does, is it going to give you enough to be able to give your reading to, shall we say, your client? Okay. Temperance there on the left, beautiful image coming in there telling us exactly what that's about. And that's demonstrated with what looks like maybe the waitress. There's a female figure holding two glasses with two different colored liquids in the opposites. And then we have what looks like a female and a male. It, our figure is handing this too. And then we've got what looks like the angel. Can you see that in the background behind our female? Lovely image. Not quite sure what the cat's doing in there, but it could speak to you in a way that another deck might not. And then we've got this other card in the middle here. It's temperance. Quite chilled out. We've got the globe there to represent the world. Behind him, we see this white, which 
perhaps is the sun, if we look, because of the way the rays are, and we can see the outline of maybe the silhouette of an angel. And it's a beautiful deck. And then we've got the fact that he appears to have what looks like the sun to the right of him, to the right as we look at it. Okay, that'd be his left side as we're looking at it right. I'm not sure if it is. I think that's perhaps what it is. And then that's it. We've got a symbol on his chest, so you can see. But not everything is as obvious as I've just explained when you know what the symbology of your card is actually telling you. I can't give you that symbology. We can see different things, of course. A lot going on on that card on the left. The body language, where they are, what they're drinking. We can see apples, some look green, some look red. Maybe one's a pomegranate, maybe it's cherries, who knows. They look as if they are being served, but it's not speaking in the way that the Rider Waite deck gave you the symbology, and there is nothing wrong with that. Why would I own decks if I couldn't read them? Of course I can. I'm experienced. It's wonderful. But if you're starting off, and I remember starting off and getting a deck from my friend, and it was. I think it was the Tarot Marseille. It did absolutely nothing. I thought, I'll never be able to do this based on that deck. And yet, I know people that absolutely love it. It's whatever suits you. So the purpose of this is to look at the lovely temperance card and how different they can be. But will it help you? And if it does, people say, I could get so much from that. That's the deck then that you're drawn to or something similar where you can really work with it. But my point also is, if you've got decks and they are not working for you, consider moving back to Rider Weight. Why? Because it's universally the one that everybody uses and it will speak to you through its symbology. So very important um, to have something that works for you. Okay, the third card there, uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look at the colours, look at what's going on. It's really dreamy, and I absolutely adored this deck. I saw it on the internet a long time ago, and it's, wow, I have really got to have that. And I love that deck. But again, it may not be enough for you, and in it's not so obvious with the alchemy symbols that we talked about. And incidentally, temperance does actually come cover all the four elements because we've got the earth symbol there, we've got the fire symbol there, we've got the air symbol in our character's clothing in the Raider, uh, sorry, the Rider Wake deck. And so much is going on to give us so many clues. But also looking at this third image. We haven't got those three streams. That just looks like loads of water being sloshed. And the colours are different, aren't they? And they can speak to you or they can actually do nothing for you. Who knows? Okay, let's move this on. Uh, different deck again. And I do apologise because someone will know how to pronounce this when I do. But the card on the left comes from the Druidcraft Tarot. That's a wonderful deck. Uh, you really would benefit from that deck. There's so much in it. But this particular one, I don't know how you pronounce that, and I'm sure it's a pagan word, and I'm sure that it's well understood by many. All I'm going to say is I love that deck. I think that really is something very special in this card. But again, it may not be right for you. There we can see that she's creating something. She's pouring what looks like test tubes or glass tubes of some sort to create something. And is that a cup or is that a cauldron? What's going on? We can see the mountains there, but not that obvious of the angel. Okay. Then we've got the cats. 
Bohemian Tarot deck. Absolutely lovely. But really all we've got is Kitty pouring two cups one to the other. May not do it for you. Apart from the fact that you love it, you know your cards well enough and you know everything about temperance and it speaks to you so you can read with that deck. Or you might see something in it that others don't, yeah, to each their own. And then we've got the Borderless Rider Waite deck, colours different again. Not much, uh, not huge amount, but enough for us to be able to actually say that might speak to you more than the deck that I showed earlier. They're all different versions, but this is they're right away, and you can almost recognize them, can't you, straight away? That's that one. And ah, my, um, my special sort of favorites. There is, I think this is the Groovy Weight deck on the left. If it's not, it's the Tripping Weight. Sorry. I don't have the boxes, so I'll just put this on for you. And then we've got a witch deck there, Temperance. And that's interesting because not really got much going on there that tells us about Temperance at all. But it's a beautiful deck. A few clues in the background there. The groovy white weight deck on the left. The colours are amazing, very different. But would it speak to you in the same way? And look at the badge as in on our figure's chest. You wouldn't actually think that was an angel, and there is definitely not an alchemy symbol telling us anything. It's pretty much flower power, isn't it? Yeah. And the irises, different colours, maybe something to keep in mind. But you would probably get it from that. And I don't see the mountains there, the rainbows perhaps covering that one up. And to the right, this is the deck that I got a long time ago. Beautiful, temperance, I've seen just stunning. I just love the images. But again, quite hard to read with if you do not know your cards. Or, as I said, maybe it's, it says something unique and special to you and just clicks with you. That's my point. It's very important. And then I've got the winter weight deck there for temperance. Again. Would you know that's an angel? But it's quite Christmassy, isn't it? You can see that. But it doesn't really look like an angel. And then that's the tripping deck there, I think, in the middle. I love that work as a, from the artist that does this, James Battersby. absolutely love his decks. I can read with them. I see things in the magical. I've got that grounding of what's going on. And the last one is uh, a physical deck that we created because we were making graphics for our own deck of cards. And so, and so this is my uh, deck that I, 2006 or seven, I think it was, Temperance. And again, it wasn't meant for somebody to be able to read that card. It was for them to be able to identify that this was an image suggesting a temperance card and that it had no copyright because it was mine. <laughs> and that's why we did it. And if you've been watching, I'm about to finish this one. It's, I try and give you this so it's educational. It's not suggesting how you would read that card, but if you don't know the symbology of the cards and you don't know the meaning behind it, this is what this tutorial is about. It's not what you will get on my courses. What you will get on my courses is something entirely different. And that is a technique and it's how to use, I'll teach you timing, I'll teach you positions, I'll teach you quite simply on the video course about all the areas that one goes through, finance, family, travel, higher learning, our jobs, career, our well-being, our health, our physical, our intellectual, our emotional selves, our spiritual selves, what's happened in the past, what's the problem, who is the problem, 
and to be able to look for someone else. Most of the time we want to know about other people who are affecting what we're doing. And quite often people go, oh, do you know, how would you even look at that? And I look at these cards and I'm reading for this person, but I don't know whether it's about them, i.e. the person having the reading, or I don't know if it's about the person they're asking. That's where this spread that I teach in intermediate and in advanced comes in because it is crystal clear in position, where to look, how to look, who it is, and when it is. Even down to, would you believe I can teach you countries and show you something that's local and tell you whether it's days, weeks, months, not I think, not maybe, or it could be. It's a definite, okay? Even down to what's happening in 12 months' time. And yeah, it covers all aspects. It takes you into a place where you would be able to give the very best interpretation of a reading by feeling that you had a system that you're working with so that you could actually give the answers at the same time. Of course, if you want to actually fuse that with your psychic and intuitive gifts, by all means. Some people actually use just the system. It's up to you. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed it tonight. And I will say we'll be looking at how we read this card by using minor cards to tell us how much we can get from this card temperance. Join me on Tuesday, where every week we always look at the card we've actually had a tutorial on and learn some symbology on. And go, how do we read it? How we read it with this card? What does it mean when we get that card with that? And you will be surprised how much it can make a difference to everything I've just said could be quite overwhelming. And so... It would make a huge difference if you knew the system just a little bit. So Tuesday at five. And if not, I'll see you um, next Thursday, of course, where we do a tutorial on the next major card. And that's card number 15. Have a wonderful weekend. And hopefully that starts for you early tomorrow. And take care of yourself and each other. Till next time. Bye-bye for now.